Hey, you haven't returned you are gay! Hi, and welcome back to Real Queer. My name is Cade, and on Wednesday it is my 30th birthday, so I thought it would be fun to make a list of 30 films that have been my favorite from each year I've been alive. If you're new to my channel, I make videos. Uh, that's what I do here. I used to put out videos every other Saturday, rankings and recommendations, but I'm kind of just going with the flow lately, so I'll see you all next week when I do my January wrap-up of everything I watched in January. So let's just, you know, get through this list. It's from 1993 to 2022, of course, because, you know, I was born in January, so uh, 2023 isn't quite finished. <laughs> Starting with 1993, we have Tix, which is a fun creature feature, and it stars Seth Green, uh, various sized ticks, and very good practical effects. Of course, the same year, Leprechaun was released, but it just doesn't hold a candle to Tix as far as I'm concerned, even though I do love the pogo stick death. For 1994, I have New Nightmare, which is my favorite of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. It's just a really good, like, more serious look at Freddy Krueger, and I very much appreciate appreciated that. It's just a really good dark film, and of course Wes Craven directed it, so eh, you know, good. <laughs> For 1995, we have another franchise film, and this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation. This is by far probably the worst film on this list, but it's just very entertaining and it has a lot of humor, and I love watching it, especially when she beats her with a stick. It's just, it's really fun. It's a really dumb movie, but it's really fun. For 1996, we have Scream, of course, because these later years of the 90s and early thousands were inhabited by Scream, so it's kind of hard not to choose any of those movies, so you will see a lot of them on this list, and, you know, whatever. Scream, of course, is directed by Wes Craven, and it was definitely, you know, the revival of the horror franchise, so respect where respect is due. Um, 1997, we also have Scream 2, which is far better than Scream, in my opinion. I love all of these movies, but Scream 2 is probably my favorite other than Miss Scream 4 over here, which is uh, beautiful. I love it. So you'll see that in 2011. <laughs> Uh, for 1998, I have The Faculty, which was directed by Robert Rodriguez and written by Kevin Williamson. I guess we just have a lot of Kevin Williamson on this list, um, but that one is really fun, like a really fun like high school take of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and it's just pivotal 90s. It's, it's a really fun movie. Josh Hartnett is beautiful, and the lesbian queen, Clay Duvall, is in it. Uh, Elijah Wood's there. Jordana Brewster, my queen from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Um, yeah, it's a really stacked cast. It's really fun. For 1999, I have House on Haunted Hill, which of course is a remake of the Vincent Price movie, but this has an all-star cast, and it's just a really, like, I don't know, dumb movie that came out in the 90s. It was, it was really fun, and I don't want to, like, oversaturate these movies by saying that they're all fun, but a lot of them are fun, so it's hard to, you know, take that away from them. House on Haunted Hill, though, I just have a lot of memories growing up with this movie. I thought it was scary, and it was just a really good time. Uh, of course, I've gotten older now, so it's not scary, but it's still, like, demented in its 90s way. For 2000, I have Scream 3. Um, I, I don't really have much else to tell you. I grew up with this movie. It was constantly playing in my household, so I feel very nostalgic toward it. And it has the iconic Gal Bangs and Parker Posey. Who doesn't love Parker Posey? For 2001, we have Pulse, which is the original Pulse, not the remake with Kristen Bell, unfortunately. But this movie, it's really beautiful, it's very sad, and it's just like uh, really good as far as horror goes. It has everything that you want from the genre, and it's a very well-told story. From 2002, I have May, and this was kind of hard to like decide because The Ring came out that same year, but May is just, I don't know, a movie that I can watch repeatedly and not get bored of, whereas The Ring is a movie that you would go back and watch every so often, at least for me. Uh, May, I just really like the performances in that movie. I think that it's a really good early thousands horror movie, and it's just cruel. It's 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 cruel in the way that, you know, you feel for this antagonist who is also the protagonist, and those types of movies always get me. I guess I have a thing for the underdogs who are 
taking body parts and making their own friends. <laughs> 2003, of course, they had Wrong Turn. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. It stars Eliza Dushku, and it's just my favorite. It's my favorite. I love it. It's a good slasher, like, backwoods, like, hillbilly movie. And it really delivers on the kills, I feel. Uh, especially the one up in the tree when she, you know, mm. Great. For 2004, I have Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead is my favorite remake and probably my favorite zombie movie, period. I'm not a big fan of Zack Snyder, nor am I a big fan of James Gunn, but somehow they just came together and knocked it out of the park. I love this movie. It's gory. It's just, I don't know. It's like my favorite zombie movie experience, other than Resident Evil, because I love Resident Evil which is absent from this list, sorry. <laughs> from 2005, this will come as no surprise to anyone. It's House of Wax. I love this movie. It was one that just really got me into horror. The set design and just all of the work that went into this movie creatively is great. <laughs> Paris Hilton, uh, Alicia Cuthbert, Chad Michael Murray, and his boobies. Like, I don't know, it's pretty iconic. 2006, I have Hatchet, which is just a throwback to 80s slasher films, and I love this movie. Um, the, the other ones, they're still fun, but this one just had that magic, I guess, to it. It, When I originally had seen it, thought it was scary, and then going back and watch it, you know, all these other rewatches that I've had in my life, because all I do is watch movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just one that is still good today. It's one that I can go back and it holds up every single time. For 2007, I have The Mist, and this year was hard for me because I loved Grindhouse and I liked Planet Terror. I love Death Proof, but I know people call that a horror movie. It just doesn't seem very horror to me. It's more action thrill. But The Mist, The Mist is, <laughs> it's a spectacle. You, uh, it's a lot of different things, a lot of different emotions. It's unique in that it's a creature feature, but it's also like this religious like horror film. I don't know. It's 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 scary to think about being put in that situation. And I just really like The Mist. For 2008, we have the most underrated movie on this list, and that is The Ruins. I see people like rate this so low and it drives me crazy because this movie is it's hard for me to watch. It's very squirm inducing and just like the practical effects and the, ugh, the leg, the leg, the cutting, the, ugh. It's really good though. I enjoyed it. And I'm surprised that it doesn't have a higher rating like anywhere. Like I, I'm like, am I stupid? I probably am, but that's between me and me. For 2009, everyone saw this coming, and it's Jennifer's body. I love Diablo Cody. Karen Kusama is a great director. Megan Fox was perfect for the role, and Amanda Seyfried is great in everything she does. I love the dialogue. I love the story. I love the stylistic, like, cinematography to it, and it's just, it's a really good movie. It's very underrated. Very, very, very underrated. But I'm glad that it's getting its due, because it's a great movie, and a lot of people missed out on it when it was originally released. For 2010, I have Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which is just probably one of my favorite horror comedies. It's really funny, it's really stupid, and just being put in a situation where people are dying around you and you have nothing to do with those murders and being blamed for them, it's, it's silly. Imagine being in that situation for real. It would not be as funny as this, but yeah, it's a good, it's a, it's a good movie. A great movie. For 2011, I went back and forth on this one because I love Your Next, but I love Scream 4. Like, Scream 4 is just, it's the franchise at its best, I feel like. It's over-the-top scream, and it's just iconic, especially with Jill Roberts. She is the best ghost face. And I did that because I don't want you to argue with me. <laughs> she is the best. <clears throat> and of course, Kirby's in this one. It's just, it's great. I love this movie. The only thing that I don't like about it is the, like, glossy filter that they have, because that drives me crazy every single time that I watch it, but I just, I love this movie. It's perfect to me, and will not hear anything bad about Scream 4, ever.
I'll do this. La, 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 la. But yeah, your next is just as good, but not like, like uh, I've seen Scream 4 so many times. It's the one movie in the franchise that I could just watch repeatedly. Like, I don't need to sit down and watch all of them. I just need to watch Scream 4. I gotta get my fix of Scream 4. It's that good to me. For 2012, I felt like this was kind of a barren year. Uh, like, nothing was really going on. So I have Prometheus, which I guess tends to be more sci-fi than it does horror. But I really liked this movie. The cinematography is great. The acting is great. The music is great. And it just has a lot of atmosphere. I feel like it was very underrated when it had originally released. But it was just a movie that resonated with me. I really like Alien, the first one, of course. Uh, Aliens is okay, then you have Alien, <laughs> and then you have Alien 3 and Resurrection. I don't know, Prometheus just brought it back to that level for me where it was just a very tense theater experience and just a really good overall film. For 2013, and this should come as no surprise to anyone uh, again, because I guess that's a popular thing for me to say during this video, but it's 2013's Evil Dead, which is a perfect remake, a perfect film, and I just love how they're trapped in the scenario and it's realistic. It's not like uh, where you're sitting there waiting for the person to leave. Like, they can leave at any moment, you know? And they are putting themselves in this situation or getting thrown back in it. And with Evil Dead, it's just the perfect scenario. Like, they're trapped there. They can't do anything about it. It's tense. It's gory. It's fun. It's perfect. Thank you. 2014, I have Dead Snow 2, Red vs. Dead. And this is just uh, a perfect little uh, <laughs> zom calm horror film like it's 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 so stupid i love it it's over the top it's nazi zombies versus every day of joe guy like it's so stupid it's so stupid just watch it it's stupid you'll like it <laughs> Especially the first Dead Snow, that one was really good, but this one just takes everything that's great about the original Dead Snow and amplifies it. It's like Dead Snow times 1000. For 2015, we have another Karen Kusama film, and that is The Invitation. This one is just a very tense thriller. It's... I don't really know how to describe it. I don't, like, you can't really... I don't know. I don't want to give anything away, but, like, it's a really good movie. It's very tense. It's a really great thriller. Um... I feel like I can't say much about it without giving anything away. For 2016, I have 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is another great sci-fi film that is very tense, and it stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead, um, and she's great in everything that she does. I know that she was, you know, in an affair with Ewan McGregor, but that's none of my business, and she's still a great actress. <laughs> 10 Cloverfield Lane is just, I don't know, it was a surprise that it was coming out. They released the trailer like very shortly before the movie was released and you didn't really know anything about it and having a sequel to Cloverfield was just very exciting. So I think all of that excitement for the Cloverfield franchise, Mary Elizabeth, and just this very tense thriller that happens to be a sci-fi is just, I don't know, it was really good. It, it like was very left filled. 2017, I have The Babysitter, and I feel like if you're getting an impression right now, it's that I love really stupid, gory movies. The Babysitter stars Samara Weaving and was directed by MCG, who directed Charlie's Angels, and I love the Charlie's Angels movies. They're so stupid, um, and so is The Babysitter. The Babysitter is really stupid. I enjoyed Bella Thorne's performance. I don't really like her as a person, I don't think, but her performance in this movie and her character very flawless, perfect, very just comedic. I love it. 2018, I have Hereditary, which is just a very emotional movie. It's very sh shocking, surprising, it's scary, it's emotional, it plays very well as a horror but also a family drama, and it's just, it's shocking, it's scary. <laughs> and it made me cry, it made me cry. So, what horror movies make you cry? probably every single one that I have on this list. 2019, I have another Samara Weaving starring film, and that is Ready or Not. And Ready or Not is like, I don't know, kind of like your next, but also its own thing. It's 
great. <laughs> I know I'm saying that about a lot of the movies on this list, but I mean, they're my favorites from each year I've been alive, so I've earned the right to say that they're all great and not get into further detail. If you have a problem with that, go watch a better YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, ready or not, the whole story and the twist on, you know, a wedding surprise or a wedding game, it was pretty original, and I like this movie. Radio Silence, of course, is directing the new Scream movies, but I don't know, ready or not was just really good for them, and getting into Scream 2022, I was just like, what? I expected better. That's my problem. <laughs> For 2020, I have Invisible Man, and this was the, I think, one of the last movies that I had seen before the pandemic, so it was just exciting to be able to see a movie, like, one last time. <laughs> and I don't know, I love Elizabeth Moss. Of course, she's always been, like, this great actress, and I love her in Handmaid's Tale, and watching her in Invisible Man is nothing short of great for her because her performances are always really good. This movie was shocking. It has probably one of the most jaw-dropping scenes that I've seen in recent memory, and it's just really good. I told you, I'm gonna say everything's really good, really great, and perfect because it's on my list. For 2021, I have Malignant, which I love. It's absurd. It reminds me of old Dark Castle horror films, and it's it's an experience. You gotta watch it. If you have not seen Malignant, get on it. It's the first movie and the last movie that I've reviewed for YouTube because I loved it that much. And for 2022, if you watched my best and worst of 2022 video, then you already know what it is, but that's Barbarian. I love Barbarian. It was an experience. I went on a roller coaster ride with this movie and I was so confused about what was happening story-wise and the tone of it. It was just... It was crazy. But yeah, Barbarian. I really enjoyed that movie. It was one that I felt awkward about after leaving the theater and I wasn't sure where I stood, but after watching it a second time, I knew exactly where I stood with it. So that's my list of 30 films from each year I've been alive. I know I didn't say much of anything, but at least you get an idea of what type of horror films I enjoy, and I hope you didn't waste too much time on this video. Um, I'll see you all next week. Have a good weekend. I'm gonna leave, and no one is gonna stop me.